Hi, this is Carl with another SOP video for managed service providers. Today, I want to talk about licensing and being legal and moral with licenses. Let me start by telling an old joke. In fact, I love this joke so much, I tell it about once a year on Facebook. I've got a homing pigeon that I sold on Craigslist. It worked so well, I sold it three times last month. The joke is funny because the homing pigeon flies back to me and I get to sell it again and again and again. Licenses for software are not supposed to work that way. When you sell a license to a client, really, legally, you don't own it and the client doesn't own it, but it should be in the client's name. Now, this has been a pet peeve of mine literally since I started my first consulting business in 1995. I had thought, I had hoped that this was an old problem, but I hear about it again and again and again. When I first started my business, I frequently was the one who showed up when a client couldn't find their IT consultant. So, you know, Robin Robbins has a great campaign, uh, basically the bad date letter that says, hey, does your IT provider treat you like a bad date. They sell you a bunch of stuff. They do a big project and then they just stop answering their phone. They don't answer their text. They don't answer their email. You, you just can't find them. Today we call that ghosting. Well, back when I first started in the, in the nineties, it was very common that somebody would sell a big project, you know, twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 at the time, which is even more today. And then, they would set it all up and walk away. And so when they disappeared, I would show up with my promotions or whatever, and they would say, hey, can you help us out? I would have to document the network and then give them their documentation that I thought should have been done by the previous IT consultant. Literally, my first book was on network documentation because <laughs> It was the one thing that was missing, as far as I could tell, from this entire industry. So I would set them up and I would document everything and then I would tell them, you know, some of this equipment is not registered in your name. It's registered to the IT service provider. Sometimes the domain is not registered in your name. Sometimes your software is not registered in your name or the, the disks are missing and I'm not sure what's up with that. Sometimes the licensing paperwork was clearly photocopied. The disks were gone. The data was on the server. Sometimes it was even in a folder labeled pirated software. Now, why you would call it that, I have no idea. But the point is, I thought I had entered an industry filled with scoundrels and people who were actually lying to their clients. We need to make sure that not only do we operate above board and honesty with integrity, but that we train our technicians that that's how they should act as well. Overwhelmingly in this industry, as in most industries, new owners start out as technicians who say, hey, I can do a better job and they start a company. And so they become the, the new owner and if they've learned the wrong lessons, they perpetuate this problem of not treating software appropriately. At the end of the day, the client has paid for the software. The license is theirs. It is not yours. All the information related it, to it should be registered in their name. I love the administrator address for this, administrator at company.com. And then it should be documented because at the end of the day, because you don't own it, you should be replaceable. I'm sorry to hear that, you know, but it happens. And it might be that 
that they become the too troublesome for you or they're too small for you or you get a better offer or whatever. There's lots of reasons why you would leave that don't have to be negative. But people go their ways and it's part of being professional to make sure that they have what they need. It's in their name and they have access to it because they have paid for it. The reason I say this has to do with being a professional and not merely a question of morality is that in a professional world, you should be able to take your business and go somewhere else. If I don't like an auto dealership, it's pretty easy to just take my car somewhere else. If I don't like my lawyer, well, I can go find another lawyer, but I'm going to ask that all my records get forwarded from the old lawyer to the new lawyer. If I change my accountant, I want to have my records forwarded to the new accountant. If I change technology consultants, I want my records to be movable enough so that I can hire somebody else to do that work. That portability is part of what it means to be professional. Of course, I know you've all heard of HIPAA. Well, the P in HIPAA is portability. <laughs> it is the Health Information Portability and Accountability Act. When we sell these things to our clients, we have the duty as a fiduciary to our clients to do the right thing by them. And that means the software goes in their name, registered to them. They have access to the license keys. They have what they need so that they can take this and have support from another IT professional. Again, that was how I got introduced to this industry in 1995. Skip ahead. It's now almost 30 years later and we have the exact same problems. I've been on a long email string with a friend of mine who is in exactly this situation. The person before him, sold illegal software to the client, literally stole the client's money. They don't have access to the licenses because it's not theirs. And now they're in a situation where they've got an honest technician who's worried that they might be in trouble with the software vendor because they know that they are running illegal software. They've already paid for it once, so that's fine. They're going to go sue the other IT consultant, but the legit moral consultant is in a bad way. Not only do you need a procedure and a process for your own company, but you need to actually educate your employees and your clients that this is what we expect. This is the right, just, moral way for software to be managed. And a lot of people are very uncomfortable with the morality piece of it. But at the end of the day, morality exists for a reason. You should not be stealing from your clients and you should not be in an industry where it is acceptable for people to do that. You know, over at the National Society of IT Service Providers, we're talking about these issues. And one of the things that comes up again and again is, People saying, well, you're raising the bar. You're making it hard to get into this industry. Well, if you think that you have to do underhanded things that are actually violating the license agreement and illegal in order to be in this industry, you have a bad business model. So you need to set some standards for yourself, for your clients, for your employees. And it should be written down. This is how we manage software and hardware licensing. I'd love any comments, especially disagreements. Put them down below. I promise not to make fun of you if you don't make fun of me. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Polachuk wishing you the best of luck in everything you do.